many, 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 too many many's, many, many things to discuss. Today, it's not gonna be an hour long, so don't worry, in today's video. In a, in a little while, I've got to talk about a team. Somebody, well, I'll say somebody, um, Sam Ingersoll at Football London has mocked up a team of how West Ham could look next season. And it's if West Ham sign every player we've been linked with, if David Moyes gets everybody he wants, they've done it as a bit of fun, they've said it's a bit of fun. Um, all the planets align, and we're really, really lucky, then this is how the West Ham team could look. So I've taken that fun, and I'm going to um, I'm gonna douse it. I like piddling on fireworks. I'm going to douse it with a, with a heavy spray, of, uh, of a scent, heavy scented spray of realism, and say what I think is going to be the West Ham team for next season, given our financial situation. It's all right. Don't go now. Don't come... Come back, come back. Don't go now. Uh, it's because it's not going to be the same as the team that finished against Aston Villa. There's some tweaks. And so we're going we're gonna to deal with that. Before I do, I want to go through um, three articles. One of them about Eze, Eze, and one of them about <laughs> preposterous. Um, Roberto. Roberto. Oh, you're not going to believe this. Maybe you already know. Maybe you will believe it. And another one. Basically, another guy that we are apparently battling out with um, with Crystal Palace for. Now, these three articles, because I've been quite clever here and tied it in, are all from, I'm going to shift over, because I'm going to pop them up there, are all from the One Football app, which is downloadable in the link below. But I have literally just swiped it open today and thought, okay, what's the foot One Football app saying about West Ham? Because I've tailored it to only give me West Ham stories. So the first one, we go with the first one first, right? Of course, you wouldn't go with the second one first, would you? Atletico Madrid are eyeing up West Ham goalkeeper Roberto. How is this possible? How, why, how have they, no, maybe they've got the same scouting system as West Ham. They, I know what they did. Atletico Madrid are hired Husselos. Pellegrini went to Real Betis. Husselos went to Atletico Madrid. And he's gone there and he said to Simeone... I'm going to recommend you a good goalkeeper. In, in, he would have said it in Spanish. I can recommend you a good goalkeeper. How on earth does this guy keep getting jobs? He should be out of work. Imagine going to work each day, screwing up your job, and then so getting headhunted next week. Saying, do you know what? I'd really like you to come and work for us. I, 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 I can't believe it until I see it. The other article, the main article, is about everybody's favourite Lionel Richie player, Eze, is Abire Eze. It's, now, the article says West Ham to make a swap bid for QBR midfielder Abire Eze. Now, let's just, let's, I want to just nail this down right now. Every season... We seem to, I say every season, every transfer window, we seem to get into a situation whereby we get linked with a player and then lots of people who previously weren't talking about him desperately want him. And it's also like he's the only show in town. Maxi Gomez would be a great point. No one spoke about Maxi Gomez. Nobody. We get linked to Maxi Gomez and then all of a sudden, everyone's going mad that we didn't get Maxi Gomez. I really wanted to. I'm really, well, hold on, you weren't mentioning him two months ago. And I think we've got a bit of that with this guy. Now, he is a talented player, it's no doubt. Now, apparently, Crystal Palace are, I don't know if they've agreed a deal, but they're quite close to it. Now, what this article with the One Football app is saying, that we want to make a bid for this fella. But we want to include Jordan Hugel in it. In all honesty... Looking at the picture, which I've got on the phone there, looking at that picture, I think, I think, I don't think we should give him any money, just Hugo, because he doesn't have a head. So he can't be very good in the air. He's got to be really good with his feet, hasn't he? Let's, let's be perfectly honest. But anyway, the point is, that wasn't the point. The point wasn't about him not really. I think he does have a head before anybody corrects me on that. We, we don't need him. If we can't afford him, if the money is not there, let's concentrate on other areas. David Moyes has said today he wants to concentrate on the defence. Fine. I'm not going to be losing any sleep if this guy signs for Crystal Palace. He looks really good, looks great, that's fine. But I just don't think we need him. He plays on the left of midfield or he plays in attacking midfield. 
I think we're fine there. For reasons I'm going to go on to in a minute when we discuss this team, the team, the shape the team could look like next season. So anyway, so that, that's that one. That's one story there. The other story um, was West Ham and Crystal Palace have contacted Nathan, is that how I say it? Nendez's agent. Um, well, that's really it. West Ham and Crystal Palace are keen on Uruguayan midfielder Nandez this summer. Uruguayan. I prefer Uruguayan. Um, I, I just, I just prefer it. In the same way, may I say, by the way, to, um, to Sat, the Pocky Punk, who said, I don't say Paolo Fornals' his name correctly. Apparently it's Pablo. I don't want to say Pablo. I like Paolo. In fact, I might just go with Paul, because we all know that his name is the Fornicator. El Fornicador. Just in the same way that we know our manager is Moisey, or David Moist. And in fact, I want to get a few more of these names nailed down. It's a sort of like code but for you and me that we know who we're talking about. Nicknames for players that the players have nothing to do with. That's why we need players with interesting names coming in. Anyway, it says, um, as per Gazetta dello Sport, both Premier League clubs have now contacted the players' agent regarding the summer move. West Ham are leading the chase. For this guy, I'd never heard of. It would be interesting to see if we are willing to pay the asking price for the hard-working midfielder. The player has a release cord of 36 million euros. We're not. Forget it there. That's what the article says. We are not prepared to pay the price. I'm going to tell you that now. We ain't paying the price, right? So there you go. You can scupper that one. Anyway, three articles today from the One Football app concerning West Ham. By the time you watch it, it's yesterday. But uh, anyway, it's downloadable in the link below. You can tailor it to your own specifications. I only get the West Ham news and the West Ham gossip. And that's it. But anyway, let's get back to this team. Let's, let's talk about the team. And as I said... It's really a mock-up of what our team may be, could be, should be next season. And I just... I'll pop it up on screen here. And here it is here. And as I say, it's done by Football London, who have said we're only having a bit of fun. So I'm not giving them stick, but I'm going to tear the team apart. So at the moment, it's, it's Fabianski and goal. Wag, Wag, Woog. We can't sign these people. I can't say their names. If I can't even say Pablo, Paul. What chance have I got of saying Waig, Wag, Woog? Diop, Ogbonna, Robinson, who I'm perfectly capable of saying. Uh, Rice and Sujek in the middle. Um, and one. In fact, it's got to be Jim Bowen. We are going to call him from henceforth on this channel. It's Jim Bowen. Jim Bowen on the right. Eze in the middle. Ben Rama. On the left, and then Ollie Watkins down the middle. This is a complete overhaul he's doing here. It's a lot of really good players who've done really well for West Ham. Who are not getting a sniff of the team. Oh, poor old Antonio. Saved us from relegation. No, you're not in. You're booted out. You're gone, old son. Look, let me just tell you this, right? And, and I do, as I say, the article is a bit of fun. Which is absolutely fine, by the way. Um, this, that's not going to happen. What I will do is I will accept that we may sign one fullback. So let's take Waig Wag Woog out of it because, well, because I can say Robinson. So let's take that right back out of there. And what we'd do is we would put Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Johnson, too old. We could probably afford Glenn Johnson, but we'll go with Ben Johnson. Johnson, Diop, Ogbonna, Robinson. Fine. I think that's fine. Jim Bowen on the right. Obviously, Suchek and Rice in the middle, as long as we don't sell Declan Rice. If we sell Declan Rice, we can have this team, by the way. Bowen on the right. Now, this whole thing with Eze in the middle, no. No, 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 no. Look, if what we're going to get, what we're going to do is get caught up in some ridiculous battle with Crystal Palace for a player that really we don't need, it's, it's preposterous. Let's play... The fornicator there. Let's play the fornicator in central midfield. Right? Let's do that. Um, and where he's got Ben Rama? Again, very good. I'm not saying that Eze and Ben Rama are bad players. They're clearly very good. I'm saying we ain't got the money. 
All these things, oh, we're going to get 25 million for Anderson, which is obviously 10 million less. We're not. No one's going to buy him for that. I, I, I'd be gobsmacked. And I'd be pleased. Please do come back and remind me and say, hey, Gonzo, you said we wouldn't be able to offload Anderson for 25 million. We have. You were wrong. I will come on here. I would say I am wrong. I just can't see anyone wanting to buy him. If you don't like so much, you buy him. He's, he's not. It's not going to happen. So what we do is we play the fornicator in a number 10 role. Give old, you know, Mark Noble, give him a little rest. Give him one of them, um, give him a nice reclining chair. One of them little pillows, you know, the ones you blow up that wrap around your neck for when you're on a coach journey. Give him one of them, sit him down, it can come up in the last 10 minutes like that, and we'll play the fornicator there in the middle as a number 10. On the left, it's simple. It's easy. Well, it's not easy. That's a different one. No. Um, it's, it's Grady Dean Garner. He plays on the left. All right. Now, I am aware that I have only signed one player thus far, which is Robinson. I'm keeping Fabianski at the, at the, as, as goalkeeper, by the way. I'm, I'm assuming by this point that Roberto has moved to um, Paris Saint-Germain or, or Real Madrid or the Harlem Globetrotters or wherever he's going. And unfortunately, he'll be unavailable for West Ham. So Fabianski is still in goal. But I'm just working on a proviso that we have no money here and how the team could look with us having no money. And the reason I put Robinson down there is because Robinson is at, um, is at Wigan Athletic. And Wigan Athletic are skin. They're in administration. Their home, home is about to become repossessed. And if we can't go and buy a player, if West Ham United in the Premier League with, with, with an owner worth over a billion quid can't buy a left-back who's almost out of contract from a skint championship club are about to go into liquidation, then we are more skint than we ever feared. I think that's realistic. The other geezer, whatever his name was on the um, the, the, the Uruguayan. Um, someone's missed the start of this video and they're going to correct me and say, oh, oh Gonzo, it's, it's Uruguayan. Uh, the Uruguayan, whatever his name was, Nacho, the, the Uruguayan Nacho, 35 million euros, forget it. Robinson for a couple of million quid, that's it. But I'm just saying I don't think the team is terrible. I don't think the team is embarrassing. I wouldn't mind that team. But it's as a thing, you've got to let it go. You've got to let it go. Because every season this happens. It was what we call, I call it Maxi Gomez syndrome. We... We get linked with a player. I'm not saying that nobody has heard of this guy before. He has. We've been doing his videos all season, and Bowen and Eze constantly came up all season, and eventually we signed Bowen. But what I call Maxi Gomez syndrome is a player that no one really speaks about. Then we get linked to him. We hear the manager might want him, and everybody's crying when we don't get him, right? And it's the same with these fullbacks that we're getting linked with. Um, no one mentioned Matty Cash. And then all of a sudden we get links to Matty Cash, don't get it. Everyone says, we really needed Matty Cash. I wanted him. I wanted him for years. I've always wanted Matty Cash. Ever since he was a baby, it was clear. And um, what I'm saying is, is Eze is a good player. A fine player. But if Crystal Palace had got him, Crystal Palace had got him. If we have no money, we've got no money. There'll be enough videos on this channel about why we ain't got no money, by the way. <laughs> about season tickets and all this other nonsense. But once you've accepted that our owners aren't putting any more money in, once you've accepted that we're skin, then you've got to take a very, very different look at the team. And I'm just saying I don't think it has to be complete doom and gloom. Because actually I think in Glenn Johnson, Glenn Johnson, I've done it again, what's wrong with me? Ben Johnson. We've got a really good, sound, defensive fullback. He's not going to get any worse. He's only going to get better. And he looks like he could do a good job. Would it be nice to have another one in there and then maybe Johnson is cover for right left back? Yes, but if we can't afford it, we can't. But I do think a new left back coming in, or whatever, you buy the side that you can. If it's right back that you get, buy him. Johnson goes in the other, the other flank, goes left. If it's a left back you get, then Johnson goes in on the right. I think that improves the team. I think that improves the team defensively. Um, which is really what we want, isn't it? Because we're an absolute disaster when people try and attack us. So I think that's fine. I, I do think the other problem position is the left. And because of Felipe Anderson, because Fornals plays there, he's not a left winger. 
Well, Dean Garner. He says about this. What's he want? David Moyes wants good players in the championship. Well, there's one. You have to sign him. Won't cost us a penny. And Fornals, if, if he's as good as everybody thinks he is, and I think, don't get me wrong, I think he's a hard worker. I don't, I don't think Fornals, I don't, I don't think the Fornicator is quite as fantastically brilliant as many think he is, okay? I, I haven't done it on day one, but I do think he's a good player, and I do think he's a Premier League standard player. Give him his chance. Let him play there. I think he'll get some assists playing from there. He may even score some goals. Is it as a no, but we haven't got 20 million. We can't go and buy the fella. We really can't. Let it go. Let it out. And in terms of the striker, well, yeah, I think it's a problem position. I've said it's a problem position. But bearing in mind, I don't think we're going to be able to sell Sebastian Heller, as you saw in yesterday's video. Bearing in mind, even though he's looking at Antonio's age, he's probably the wrong side of 30, unlike myself. I don't think it is necessarily striker as a problem position. We've got two of them there. How many do you need? Probably more than that. Is it the one David Moyes wanted? No. Look, Antonio being over 30, or whatever, being 30, 31, is a problem if that's your striker for the next three or four years. But please don't tell me there's not another season in Mikel Antonio. And if that's the case, then he plays there. He can also play on the left. I'm just saying... If just because we don't sign all of these players that we're linked with, it ain't necessarily the end of the world.